Cut. Ah. Uh, okay. Some people, looking at all the activities we've had at the farm, the effort that's gone in, they look at me and say, boy, you must be a, f a fanatic about Johnny Cash. I am not a fanatical fan. I didn't grow up with Johnny Cash. I respect his music. I respect a lot about him. But hey, I think to be a real fan, you have to have at least gone to one concert, it would seem to me. I never did. Where did this enthusiasm for building or making something that's not so beautiful, beautiful come from? It came from my dad. Uh, when my dad opened up a camp in Japan, the whole uh, stream was covered by thousands of rocks. Literally, he moved those rocks one rock at a time and created this gorgeous camp. My dad was a missionary. He was a great preacher. He knew the Bible, but he, wor he wasn't scared to work with his hands. But that was his philosophy. So, hey, I respect Johnny Cash but I respect my dad more. Daddy was a preacher with a heart to let him east. I grew up watching cowboys, they all spoke Japanese. Lying on the floor at night, my brother's fast asleep. Hope to God one day I'd live and the land across the sea. When we purchased the museum, or what was basically a broken down shack one mile from the farm, the impetus for that was this videotape. The tape that showed Johnny Cash, June Carter, Maybelle Carter singing on that stage. Carl Perkins giving a beautiful tribute to Johnny Cash, a tribute heartfelt tribute. I, I believe it's the most beautiful tribute since Jonathan gave a tribute to King David, his good friend. It's that special. You've been a friend with a heart as big as you are. A helping hand to all mankind. You're a solid rock in this quicksand world, John. Yeah, Johnny Cash is that cow. You shared your blessings with others. I'm one, and I know it's true. And if my boys don't take after Jesus, John, it's all right with me if they'll take after you. And I knew when I saw that footage and especially when we discovered that footage wasn't just VHS, but it had been taken on 16 millimeter. And Chance Martin, a good friend of Johnny Cash that took that film, told me it was the only film he ever took with 16 millimeter. And if you look at the whole content of that film, it's a smoking gun of Johnny Cash's spirituality. I think it's the, the film that stands against Walk the Line. Of course, that was a different period in his life, but as a Hollywood film, they focus on the scandal. They spent very little time in that film t talking about Johnny's spiritual journey. Well, this film, a private party with friends and families, an intimate party, Johnny opens up. Well, we bought, let's call it what it was, the shack for a modest price, but we invested you know, close to a million dollars in that shack because I knew historically this was very, very important place. But I learned later that it was more important than I thought when I realized that a man named Red Wortham, nicknamed Red, had sold that place to Johnny Cash. Uh, it was his studio. And turns out, Red Wortham went to Tennessee State Prison and recorded the song, Just Walking in the Rain. 
And that song may very well have saved Sun Records and launched Elvis Presley's career. Because when he heard that song, that was what prompted him to go to Sun Records. So they all come together there. Now Elvis never visited the Storytellers Museum, but considering that it was Red's studio, through Red, Johnny Elvis's spirit was in that very place. We now restored this place, it's beautiful. People come and say it's like a cathedral. And that's, that is what I want it to be. When people walk in, I want them to just be awed and say, wow, it's a beautiful environment to worship. Um, it's a building that keeps giving. It just keeps giving. You know, in the Hebrew language, there is no word for coincidence. And I believe that. And I've been on this journey now with my wife since 2013, and many unusual things have happened. Um, things that I, I could never imagine. And one of the things that I started to see at the farm and the museum is how important music is to healing. And I'm not talking physical healing, I'm talking about the feeling of the spirit. You know, I, I learned that so many people in Nashville, painters, construction workers, they're all, okay, that's an exaggeration, but many of them are songwriters. And it seemed like all the workers would show up with guitars and we'd spend lunch talking about uh, songs that are written, we listened to them, songs that the farm inspired in them. Underneath the angel's watchful eye Bright wings parted wide Wings parted wide Now, one of the things that I learned at the farm and the museum is that I'm not a very humble person. I have been really upset off and on and discouraged because with all this work, the people just aren't coming. It's not working out financially. And that was very difficult because I believed if this place, the farm, was what Johnny Cash called the center of his universe, people would be flooding there. I wasn't as, as smart as I thought. You know, there's this famous movie that I think one of the key ideas of if you build it, they will come. Well, that ain't true. Maybe sometimes, but it hasn't happened yet. But we're not done yet. You know, my dad spent 50 years in Japan. It takes a long time. And the other thing I started to learn is what my dad taught me, really, I should have known, is really the material part of the farm and the museum isn't what's important. It's, it's the, what Johnny Cash called the flesh and the blood. It's the people it attracts and the lives you can touch. See, that's what this is all about. Um, if you spend too much time just focusing on building cool things, the biggest stage, the highest stage, well, you know, what that does, it just makes you proud. And you know, that's one of the biggest sins. God doesn't like pride. So I invited my good friend and my mentor, Pete Wilson, to the farm, my wrestling coach. And I said, speak about whatever you want. And guess what his subject was? Pride. Humble. The humblest person that ever lived on this earth was Jesus Christ. To have done what he did, 
No one else could have done it, only he alone. He who knew no sin became sin for us. The final act of humility is Jesus saying to God, I do all this because of my love for you. As I've studied about people like Elvis and Johnny Cash and others, I think what makes them unique is they had a dose of humility. With the fame came this humility. That is so rare. Um, now, I had a visit once from a guy named Dallas Fraser. And uh, he came to the farm and encouraged us, and we got to know each other. And he got excited about the museum, and guess what, he donated the piano on which he wrote Alvira and Mohair Sam. And I said, how much? He said, you can have it. He brought us awards. He's the first guy in this town that I haven't been able to pay any money to. They do exist. He's a humble man. And at the peak of his career, he wrote some of the greatest songs. He quits. He chooses God over his the great, further greatness that he might have achieved as a songwriter. Those people are here, we just don't know them. One of my favorite poems is Osmendus. This is great king and he builds this big monument to himself. And the poem describes what happens to the monument. He, he says, look at my works. Well, yeah, the monument now with all the weathering and so forth, is pretty much going into the ground. Johnny Cash, right across the street, had a beautiful home on the lake. Everybody wanted to see this home. Guess what? It burned down. In fact, when Johnny Cash sang the song Hurt, and he talks about the empire of dirt, you know, there it is. All that lasts is what you do in the lives of people. That's where you gotta invest. Investing in people is not risk-free. It's, it's the highest risk, because you're dealing with people's souls. But it's the one thing God takes pleasure in. So all of us in the music business, music industry, there's nothing wrong with making money. We make sure we invest in the people, because that's what matters at the end. And when this whole journey is over and I look back and doctor tells me I got a few weeks to live, I'm not gonna be thinking about that barn I built. I'm not gonna be thinking about the one piece of the time card that we do have at the museum. No, I'm gonna be thinking about the people, my own kids, my wife, the people God brought into my orbit. And is their life better because of what I may or may not have done, or is it worse? That's it, that's all that counts, really. And all God's people said? Amen. All right, Amen. that's it. Thank you. Let's sit down if you think I could now well, preach at your church. Right. Hold on, hold on. Am I sounding too much like evangelist? Now, if you send me a $1,000, and I, God is telling me that a thousand of you are going to send me a thousand dollars. I will send you the How Great Thou Art CD. Now, <laughs> yeah, and I've touched it and I prayed over it and I put a little tear rag with it. So come on, folks. I guarantee you all your debts will disappear. Okay, he'll take three. All your debt, debts will go, you'll become rich. You won't be going to McDonald's anymore. More, you'll be eating steak every day from morning, noon to night. Okay? Hallelujah. Okay.